It's another wild and oddly manufactured Night Talk free-for-all night straight ahead on the Pittsburgh Cable News Channel. Don't hear anything in my eye. Studio A, here's John McIntyre. Yeah. Hi everybody, welcome to the broadcast live in color from high atop Television Hill, Studio A with Eric C. Later Gator running camera this evening, Richard Suffer and Su Hello, was my mic on for any of that first part? Oh, it was, it's just that I couldn't hear my thing in the ear. <laughs> <laughs> Eric C. Later Gator's on camera tonight, Richard Suffer and Succotash Sylvester is running the controls, the artist formerly known as J.C. Smith is uh, running audio and tape tonight, and uh, we don't take any phone calls, so there ain't nobody taking the phone calls. And that's it. That's the entire crew, isn't it? That's the entire complement of incredible behind-the-scenes humans, is it not? Uh, I'm uh, the guy you see here with the, uh, the, who hosts the show you see there. Here are incredible, uh, wild and wacky, incredibly intelligent, yet bizarre and humorous Night Talk free-for-all panelists. We have political analyst Mean Bill Green. We have the incredibly uh, lovely, the best damn talk show host in the city of Pittsburgh. Here, here. And, oh, yes. and I don't know if that's saying that much, but she is. <laughs> no, actually, it is saying quite a bit, as a matter of fact. No, just the best, period. Oh. Hmm. Uh, Lynn, oh, Cullen. Lynn Cullen. I meant that too. And then, uh, oh, you just mean the best female. You don't mean the best female well, talk show. You mean female. just the best woman. Yeah, well, that's true. I always think one. you can tell when what somebody's sexist when they, no, when, they, when they say female instead of woman. I think they're always a little bit sexist. <laughs> All right, and a man no, who is not only uh, liberal, he is black. He's Tony Norman. He's a columnist <laughs> for the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. <laughs> And uh, all day, too. Oh, he has been under attack all week long, and we're going to talk about a number of things. And why don't we just take a break and then we'll get to them, including the charges of uh, being leveled by a certain political person about Cyril Wecht. Straight ahead on Night Talk. Stay with us. The official transportation provider of Night Talk is Pittsburgh Limousine, the one clear choice in transportation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our first topic of conversation tonight on the free for all what? is the county executive race. Would yeah. you shut up while I'm <laughs> doing this intro for this thing? <laughs> he wasn't talking to me. I just want to no, make it. No one I, knows I was, who he was. Just I was talking to the impudent the little imp here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. conservative. Ladies and gentlemen, a shocking revelation in the political world with regard to the Wecht and Roddy campaign. We haven't been able to confirm it beyond the shadow of a doubt. But it seems that a source close to the Roddy campaign, at least according to the Night Talk staff, which is questionable at best, claims that the Roddy campaign is floating a rumor in order to uh, try to make up for the difference in the polls, because Wecht is now ahead in the polls, floating a rumor that Cyril Wecht is an alien <laughs> with no genitals. <laughs> Take a look, if you will. Trained as physicians, well, for me, it is somewhat analogous. And that is definitely... We heard a shocking report that... The Jim Roddy campaign is about to leak some information to try to discredit Dr. Wecht and drive his poll numbers down. They're going to leak the story that Cyril Wecht is an alien. Do you have any reaction to that? Oh, my goodness. Uh, you I think know it's he, possible that Cyril's an alien? He an alien, didn't he? Exactly. Uh, the only way that will ever be determined is, is when uh, there is an autopsy years away from now to determine that. Cyril Wecht did the autopsy on the alien. You do know that, right? You are, in fact, an alien. As, as Somebody a, from another planet. Well, you know, the reaction to that, Cyril. In, in a way, that could be complimentary. In other words, that I possess certain abilities and levels of, of competence and brilliance that are not to be found among normal right. mortals. There, there, there is a reason. Being an alien, do you have uh, the like? Do you have genitalia? Or? <laughs> oh, now that really is is getting very very personal. There's no genitalia. <laughs> No comment. Do you have any knowledge of this? No Do you have any comment, inside no sources? Comment. No, no any... comment on that. Do you believe he's an alien? Yes. I, I don't I know if he has any genitalia. No comment. Well, you know, I want to be careful how I answer that because it turns out that my staunchest uh, supporters are among the female gender. No genitalia. I would not want to comment on that. Why does nobody want to comment on that? Well, it's like What you, are you all hiding? It's like you and Kathy Lee Gifford's breasts. I just don't want to go there. Only 
Night Talk could air such an exclusive. I'll so are you able to comment on this at all? Can you give us any sense of... Uh, that would make you an alien as well, would it not? I guess, yeah, I guess it would, yeah. There's no genitalia. I really find that hard to believe. No genitalia. That's correct, sir. No, I think Cyril has genitalia, big genitalia. And what makes you think, what makes you so sure? If you listen to him, you know he has big genitalia. Have you ever witnessed this on any person? No, level? I haven't, but if you just listen to him... So the rumors are not true? Definitely not true. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that, John, but... Um, are you sure? I am positive. So the rumors are false? I, no, I didn't say the rumors were false. I, I certainly have no knowledge. Oh, that's not what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> My problem is he's my neighbor, so I hope I don't have any of the uh, repercussions of it. Oh, yeah. What? Did, he doesn't come over and flash his genitalia yeah, yeah. all the time. He, John, he? You, know, you never know what he's going to be up to. But, oh, uh, he's, man. He's... Jim, I've heard a disturbing report from a source close to your campaign that you will soon start leaking the information that Cyril is an alien. <laughs> no, but it's not a bad idea, John. Uh, oh, so you're denying that your campaign I, is planning to leak yes, that Yes, I'm denying that, uh, but uh, it's not a bad... I'm glad you uh, you thought of it. I further have heard that you're going to say not only is he an, an alien, but because he's an alien, hence he has no genitalia. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, I don't think I will go there. I won't go there at all. All right, because you have to have plausible deniability. You can't really be down there in the muck and the mire with your evil staff. Uh, I, I, hope, I hope that's the case. I don't think my staff is quite... Not even my staff is that evil. Jim Roddy denying the report. <laughs> Obviously clueless as to what his own staff is doing. That's great. Now let's get the uh, views of our distinguished panel here as to whether or not uh, they believe wow. the possibility that Cyril Woo! Watson is an alien. I, I've oh. never seen an expose like that. I'm Let me tell you. It's the kind of hard-hitting journalism we do here on the program, Tony. <laughs> yeah, man, you got us beat yeah, at the PG, man. Well, that'll be the 10 o'clock news. Oh, it'll be on the 10, the 11 o'clock news, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tony gets oh. an exclusive to print. <laughs> but seriously. I thought Roddy said he has no nuts. I mean, he has, he has nuts. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> no, 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 no. Stay here. Stay here. Finest talk show host <laughs> in the city. I know. The finest talk finest show host in the city. Talk show and host in the city. The finest ex-talk show host in the... I mean, uh, it's not... Excuse so, me. Uh, but I wouldn't have fallen I into believe. that. I believe. Well, I don't was, uh, believe I that. Oh, that's all right. Okay, that's okay. You're allowed. You're a liberal. But uh, as you know, I mean, we don't have... I mean, yeah, yeah. So he's probably not an alien, I guess. Huh? No, he's not an alien. All right. He's not an alien. But he's, he's, certainly, he's not from our planet. I mean, I don't know if he's an alien or not. All right. But this guy who's not from here. our planet, according, as you know, to the KD poll, is now, if the KD poll is to be believed, 15 points ahead. Isn't that something? I mean, who would have thought... What do you mean, who would have thought? It's Allegheny well, County. What do you mean? I guess, but I don't know. Maybe maybe to a certain extent, um, being in the print media, I tend to think that people are going to be a little conservative at first, get to know the candidates, make a decision based upon their expositions of their records, and no, then... he's not from this planet. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, you're not what what record? Roddy doesn't even have a record. Well, tr but but I thought there might be a, a, at least some consideration. Well, that's why I think the that's why I think the that's why I think the polls absolutely false. Three three there have been four polls out in the last three weeks. Uh, three of them have put these guys at 41, 42, 42, mm -hmm. 43. Now all of a sudden we have a 15 point sh uh, uh, change in a matter of a week. Of I don't buy that at all. Yeah. And all especially right. that poll even said there's only three percent undecided. I don't buy that at all. I think the undecided is much higher than oh, that. I think that's probably Sure. Uh, Even though I, so I, I don't think that the, the poll I mean, you can do a giant plausible. eagle poll. You go into giant eagle and ask folks who they're going to vote for, and believe me, they don't even know who the candidate is. No, they don't even know there's a race. So I mean, that's why days I out, and no one's even focused on this. Well, the reason I, I'm a little bit skeptical uh, myself because it does seem like a rather rapid turnaround yeah. from tight as a drum or war. Yeah. Tight as a whatever, what, a what, tight what's race. tight? Okay. I'm saying tight right. Uh, from wait. that to suddenly, uh, yeah, here we go again. 15 uh, points ahead. Right. But uh, the K this poll, which was criticized, as you remember, by the uh, slightly bizarre Dennis Casey when he was on the Larry Dunn campaign, he also <laughs> criticized the Katie poll. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it ended up being pretty accurate in the primaries. If you recall, despite that, its allegedly poor but, methodology. But that was in, but that was consistent with the the Tribune mm -hmm. Review poll. It was consistent with the with the Post Gazette polls. All right. those were fairly consistent. I'm getting at that this poll is not consistent with any of the other polls that have been that have been put forward in the last 21 days. That's why I think that there's some question about its validity. So, uh, what do these gentlemen have to do to win? Uh, people are actually maybe, uh, you, actually as you pointed out, yeah, start, start, starting to think about thinking about it, right? right. 
Right. Maybe barely. And even there, still a long way, I think. I have not, received, to, yeah, I I have not received one call right. on this race. And the few times I've made faltering efforts to bring it up, nothing. Mm -hmm. Nobody's interested. Mm -hmm. That would bother Nobody you. Nobody wants to talk. That would bother you. What would Knowing bother you? Knowing you that that would bother you, that people aren't talking about a very important, you get, you get exercise like I do about people not participating. I mean, we're talking about, you know, I mean, we've already voted to change our form of government. Right. Now we're voting on the executive, the person who's right. going to be the, uh, the, the most powerful politician in this region, right. the third most powerful in the state, allegedly. You're so, I mean, this is, this is something. One cannot underestimate how disaffected the average voter is. Mm -hmm. They don't see that it's relevant. They pay no attention. They don't care. They see no difference between Roddy and Wecht and or they don't care to ascertain if there is one. Mm -hmm. and, well, it's, uh, and because of that, Cyril Wecht will probably win. Well, let's beat this to death a little bit more when we come back from the break because one of the differences apparently is that uh, Jim likes privatization more. And when I filled in for you and your incredible radio show, the few calls I did get about it, that seemed to be the thing. Some people were worried about Jim privatizing and some people were not. Mm -hmm. Yes, no? What? I've never heard boo about pri that's a, uh, It's that's not only... what we call a hot topic. No, I understand. No, there's no question about that. That's why uh, you had no call. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, <laughs> you never called me. we'll come up with oh, some hot topics when we come back on Night Talk on the Pittsburgh Cable News Channel. It's free for all night. <laughs> I talk it's free for all night. Bill Green, Lynn Cullen, and Tony Norman. Uh, so I don't want to beat the death of the county executive race too much because apparently nobody's interested in it. So we will alienate the few uh, well, alienate the few viewers it. we have. It's, uh, it's so what's the difference between the candidates? This. Oh, there's a lot of difference between the two candidates, for heaven's sakes. What is it? One has great silver hair, and the other has no hair. Oh, that's. I know how heavy you want to be, but I mean that kind of. That's one of the differences. I think that's uh, but, uh, quite uh, but see, but there's no even the political. Uh, Analysts can't come up with anything. There's oh, no sort of defining of issue course that's is. really caught on that's grabbed people by the no. genitalia. No, there, no, 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 there hasn't yet. I mean, there's still there's still be six weeks. There's still going to be something that's going to be out that's going to energize people. But you do have a clear difference here. You have a difference between between you know the status quo, keeping the Democratic Party in control of the courthouse, and many people want that to stay the same, and that's fine. And you have someone who says he, he wants to bring change and change this uh, the way we've been doing things for the last 30 or 40 years to to Excuse something me. that's new and better. And Excuse that's kind me. of the main difference. Change? Did you say? change this no. area is so well, absolutely to. resistant to change of any type that if what Jim Roddy is hoping for is that people are going to vote for him because they want a sort of undefined change, he ain't going to win. I mean, change terrifies people in Allegheny Well, County. we're going to have to change that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, we can't, we can't continue with this. Well, I mean, uh, you, you, you and I... John, Tony, we've all ranted and raved over the years how, how backward this community is, and we don't do anything right. We make it hard for business. We make it hard for employees. I mean, there has to be an attitudinal change in county government, and it has to start with the, with the chief executive. And, and but it ain't going to start thought, at the polling. Uh, well, then people don't have a right to okay, bitch about it. Here are the few calls I got the other day. We're talking about should you run government like a business, which Mr. Roddy has implied that he might do, and Mr. Uh, or Dr. Wecht has said is ludicrous. So is that a good idea, a bad idea? Does it matter? I think you and by the way, if that's the most exciting issue, then we're pretty hard up. <laughs> well, I just think, I think you can take some business techniques and apply them and apply them to government. I don't mm. think it's all that hard. Right, right. I, I think mean, you, you need a, I mean, with, with any um, intelligently wait, wait. operating polis, you have to have a mixture of, of, of techniques and styles wait. and methodologies. Isn't the idea of business, if you're a smart businessman, you know how to extract as much money from the consumer, from them, as you can, and give them as little for it as you can. Well, that's true. Government that's is true. the exact opposite. Extract as little as you can from yeah. them and give them as much as you as you possibly can in return. So you could argue that somebody with a business background is absolutely the wrong person. Well, I said business techniques. You did, and okay. I noted that. Yeah, but yeah. generally speaking, when people talk about you need it run like well, a business, no, it is not no, a business. No, no, it's it government. Isn't. No, that's right. It's government. It doesn't it doesn't make widgets. It's not supposed to supply or exactly. sell widgets. Exactly. But but you can have you, you can have performance 
uh, such cost effective, cost effective, cost effective and, and, and those types of things that, that a good business would do. I would suggest right. that most businesses where you work, I work, we could cut uh, expenses by 8 to 10 percent. Right. If we actually sat down and thought about it, we'd probably cut yeah, it. If the Post Gazette uh, got rid of like half the columnists, they'd still have plenty and they'd probably save a million dollars. My point hey, being that they can't do it anymore because they've done it still. I mean, the downsizing well, happened. The I, I happened. I still think that I still think you can always, coming from a business standpoint, I believe you can always cut a little bit more. Uh -huh. And I'm I'm a oh, fairly generous oh, guy, I but I still think you can cut down on some expenses. You can cut well, down on some uh, duplication of effort. I mean, look at the county. There's duplication after duplication. In government, after I think that's true. I think there is still fat in government. Well, in business circles, I mean, are, are your fellow entrepreneurs and businessmen excited about Roddy? Very much. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, he, he, has, he, ha he, he won a major poll at the Duquesne Club. Uh -huh. Just on Tuesday. What did they call it? Uh, he just, what did they call it? Dandy Rock. Please. <laughs> You're fact, As you know, the no, in fact, I, we've got to keep it quiet. Oh, but, but man. Uh, yeah, well, since that's it's only on this show, nobody will know. Yeah. But as you know, true. as you know, the West campaign called him Duquesne Club Jim in an attempt, or Diamond Jim, but Diamond in an attempt Jim. to uh, make him look like a rich, evil, greedy Republican. Well, and, 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 and Dr. Wechter, I have a great deal of respect for and like yeah. uh, a lot. <laughs> we've, done, we've done three or four shows together up here. Yes, you have. And you, you know, he's, like we don't time. have to throw a benefit for him either. You know, he's done quite no, well. No, I understand. Uh, that. Let me just say years. this: I understand there that. are a lot of Democrats who do not like Cyril Wett. Yes. There's a lot yeah. of people who have a lot of trouble with his perceived egomania. This sort of what they perceive as a crazed personality. Perceived. At Whatever. There are a lot of Democrats I who I charm. think would not necessarily, <laughs> but I'm saying, they won't say it, and I don't think they'd tell a pollster that, but there could be, that's why I'm surprised that uh, those well, numbers that you were talking and, about. And, and, I think there's a lot of Democrats who in the quiet and secrecy of that mm -hmm. booth might go for Roddy. I know a couple of Lawrenceville Republicans, and uh, Republicans from Morningside, who want <laughs> Weck to win. Where are those are like the King Club Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Why don't they that? like uh, their men? Well, because of of the way Dunn was beaten in the uh, mm. primary, mm. and there's a lot of resentment, especially blue collar folks. There are a lot of folks who felt that um, this is a case of mass disenfranchisement. Did I say that word right? Said it. It's one of those white words. No, it's exactly. no it's, I just think it's still the, 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 the Always the picking on the white man. Franchisement. I think you said disenfranchisement. What do you well, you're probably, a strong syllabic. Uh, uh, yeah, well, you know. Well, in right. any event, a lot of folks feel that Don was robbed. Now, I'm not one of those people. I, obviously, I'm a Democrat. But um, there is that feeling out there, and I think that might be working against. Well, Mr. let's Rodgers. look at it. let's look at how much vote Larry got, and then decide how important that particular okay. element is. Right? It was it was minimal. It was uh, sure, you know, and, sure. And, well, Dunn looked so, Dunn looked picked on, as we all know, because of that right. evil. Uh, yeah, I uh, never should have run. Go for on Quayle. It was, it was, it was dad, just yeah. really. <laughs> It was just really dumb. It turned out it didn't need to do it. Yeah. No, they didn't need to do it. It was just not a wise. Decision. It was that Braybender, that attack ad Meister guy Braybender. I like to bring that one up wherever I, I can. I, just I to would fault Ken shot. Gates for that because uh, Kent. Oh, that evil campaign because manager. Of nobody Rodgers? ever faults oh, John man. Braybender. No. <laughs> oh well, well, but but God he did do, he did his job. Oh, he was probably a asked wise, to. Wise wise wizard. He did his, He was asked to yeah, produce an ad like that. Nothing to do with the disaffection of uh, of the electorate. Nothing whatsoever. You want to talk about. Do you think that there is an undercurrent of people who are, who are who are still disillusioned or disillusioned more so because of the November '97 vote on the on the sales tax for the stadiums? There is an undercurrent, I believe, that still that believe that vote was ignored. That Absolutely. city and county oh, people went ahead and did what they did, right. and that adds to this disillusionment. Right. This, this I agree. Not to right. go to the polls because right. no, I, I went to say no on taxes, right. and I they agree. did it anyway. What difference does it make? They do whatever they so want. So in a sense, uh, you know, any sort of. Um, well, you know, but then again, why would a lot of those people be necessarily um, pro Cyril? You know, like a Republican who's anti Don, uh, anti um, Roddy because of the um, primary, be pro Cyril. Well, I don't. I think he'd sit. He or she would sit out. That's I, 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 agree. I don't. I don't they don't they'd, vote. They'd go, okay. uh, they, they wouldn't go to vote for. They don't vote. for that. You could. Right. You, you just. You Any fine word? I'm still predicting Cyril and a squeaker when it's all said and done. Uh, Bill. I still. I'm still saying it's too early, and and I don't know how much money. I it's mean, never Jim, too Jim, early to Jim. speculate wildly with no foundation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do that all the time. All right. uh, uh, Roddy starts a new ad on Monday. Uh, is it an attack ad? 
No. Is it, it a Brave Ender ad? Yes. Yes, yeah. but it's not an attack ad. At uh, about $100,000 will be the buy. Um, and there'll be more coming. Uh, the uh, the question is, is, is how Cyril's fundraising going? I'm told he only raised about 100000 last Saturday when they were anticipating $200,000 in the Kennedy uh, the dinner last week. So I, fundraising is going to be the issue, whether or not uh, Cyril can the have enough, the, uh, not an issue, factor. whether or not he will have enough money to I have okay. to tell you something. See, that disaffects me. All right, we'll talk a little, since well, Lynn is this effect, we're going to hit this one more time, just a little bit, and then we'll move on to other things on Night Talk Free for All Night Stay with. Oh, no, I didn't say that. The official transportation provider of Night Talk is Pittsburgh Limousine. Whether it's for business or a special night on the town, Pittsburgh Limousine is the one clear choice in transportation. Uh, free for all night, just a little bit more in politics so that uh, we won't drive what few of you uh, left our way. I mean, I am interested in politics. I'm just afraid that nobody else, you know, you guys are, but... No, I'm not. It's just us four. No, See, I'm it's not. only us three. No, I'm not. I want to tell you, I don't talk about it anymore either because I'm sick of it. Right. Right. I'm that, sick of it on the national level. I'm malaise? sick of it on the I mean, local level. You bet there is. I'm yeah. sick of it because of the money. You said money last week. It's all about money. The buys. You said $100,000 yeah. buy. Who it's all about who raises the most money so they can buy stuff on television with these stupid 30-second ads. Whose fault ads. is that? Whose fault is it? The Republican Congress. No, it's not the Republican kind of a, Congress. My goodness. Kind of campaign it's, finance it's always the Republicans. The Democrats don't want it either. We're, everybody is competing for the same thing. It's a bad system. No one seems to have an answer. And, and I don't know what it is either. But, but I'm tired of giving, all right? It's you like, you people complain about the commercials and all the money. You know, I write thousands of dollars worth of checks every year, and I'm tired of doing it. Okay, so look at it from my standpoint. We don't I mean, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people hey, that are tired of Wait a minute. 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 Not necessarily. Mr. Bad. I didn't say that they that they actually could cash them. I just oh. said I wrote them. <laughs> oh no! Well, they all come back to NSF. But in the meantime, I've had the dinner, I've had the cocktails, I've met the candidate, and I'm out of there. There you go. All right. Uh, <laughs> screw it. Uh, we're all politically disaffected. We're sick of it. Let's talk about something really cool, like a media feud. It says here in this letter to the editor in the uh, Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Uh, Cullen versus Quinn. This would be Lynn Cullen and the uh, right-wing uh, morning talk show host. Uh, Jim Quinn. <laughs> there is a, how, yeah, you couldn't even remember his name. There is a feud <laughs> brewing between talk radio host Lynn Cullen and Jim Quinn. Lynn, uh, being a liberal, accuses Jim of uh, protecting right-wing, or pro propagating, rather, right-wing conspiracy theories and draft dodging. Did you accuse him of draft dodging? No, I did not. But you do accuse him of uh, propagating right-wing conspiracy theories. I don't know what theory. any of this is about. I read it with, with amusement and bemusement uh, with my, uh, you know, morning... Uh, Right, latte. I was going to say yeah. coffee. I don't drink coffee. Basically, this person <laughs> trashes you and uh, extols the virtues of Quinn and says right. you're mean to Here's attack what's him. Happened. Do you ever attack him on the air? Which is fine. It's yes, I have. Oh, yeah, okay. And I've ta attacked the pea brains who listen to him, too. Ah. Mm. And this is one of them, obviously. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, w I thought it was a publicity stunt, but so you No, know I think it's irresp I mean, he he's part of that just, you know, irresponsible right. uh, uh, horde of uh, talk. Is he a talk show host? I mean, does he do not really. Not I really mean, a talk show. Whatever he is, personality. Yeah. yeah. Who whips people up into, uh, you know. Yeah. To assume what? that Bill Clinton is, is, is running Murder Incorporated and is that Whatever. Right? It's yeah. just, all, it's just right. all a bunch of nonsense. And you talk about disaffection. He's part of this effort to disaffect people, to frighten people, to... Uh, to I, you know what? I have nothing to say about it, and I'll tell you what, there's no feud except in Jim Quinn's less than fertile imagination. I know, but we could start it today, and then it'd be a cool thing to talk <laughs> no, about. No, I'm not going to, I'm not, no, I am not going to help him <laughs> by responding to it. I did not respond to it on my show, and I'm not responding to I it on your show. It's too late, Lynn. I'm yes, glad she's are. not responding. No, yeah, it's yes, a good thing she has no thing. comment on Absolutely. this. Absolutely, God, I wouldn't want to see her engaged in this subject. No, 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 she, just, she doesn't well, even care I mean, about it, seriously clearly. do you take Jim Quinn? I mean, he's, he's one of those guys that... Um, I mean, he he just is resentment personified. I mean, does he really God, do talk about, about anything Stern? other than 
how much he hates the president? I mean, isn't that always topic number one, topic A? It's been that way for years. I don't think he, he, he's ever diversified. All right, let's move on to his next victim. Did you also know that Jim Quinn was attacking Tony this week, Bill? No, I did. Did he? Really? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. Because uh -huh. Tony wrote a... Although i got to admit, I don't really know this. I just heard it like fifth hand. Because you but, don't listen. Well, I, but I don't listen because I don't get up that listen. early. Oh, I, don't. I would <laughs> probably surf around you just to see what he's doing. You don't have stomach for it. What, what, uh, okay, so why was he attacking you? Because him? Tony wrote a column about uh, guns, essentially saying you never... Well, you describe it, Tony. Why should I describe it? Well, first of all, the headline was unfortunate, which I had nothing to do with. Another it's bad Post-Gazette headline. Another out-of-context Post-Gazette headline. There's, there's a boat yeah. yeah. The headline yeah, was, right. only yeah. loonies possess guns. And I thought the this column was a little more subtle than that. Maybe not. But in any event, it was just a tongue-in-cheek. Um, look at gun ownership and the insanity and so forth. And, and you were pointing out that you see very few stories about grandmothers whipping uh, a machine gun out from under their bed and uh, murdering the evil people who right, want to rob them right. and kill them. But of course. So, so uh, if everybody's really defending themselves, why do you never see stories about that? Um, in the past week, tons and tons of letters have come in from people um, reporting just those very oh, things. Yes. Oh, yeah. America, you know, rifle, the Rifleman magazine has a, a monthly tote board of little old ladies, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> shooting, you know, uh, burglars crawling through windows, allegedly, and, and you know, people protecting their farms yes, from, from tractors. That's the publication of the, of the NRA. <laughs> you remember right. the NRA. Oh, right. Well, yes, I, I am. Are you, are you a member? Yes. Are yeah. you packing a rod right now? <laughs> no, I'm not. But I have a permit. <laughs> that been my guess. I have a permit. Do you really? Yes, Are I you do. packing a permit? <laughs> I'm not, I don't carry the permit unless right. I carry the gun. Well, what's the point of being a gun-toting NRA member if you don't tote the gun? I'm not a gun-toting NRA member. I am a member of the NRA. That doesn't mean you carry a weapon. Are you packing you? a member? Huh? Uh, all, right. all right, so Tony... Uh, so you got a lot of flack this week. Did it bother you? Oh, Does it right. hurt your feelings? Did they no, have it doesn't. It doesn't. Did you rethink the issue? No, not really. I mean, I think that I, I should have been... Uh, a little more considerate, and I would have insisted on a different oh, see, headline. Oh, this is what's wrong with liberals. <laughs> this annoys me no end. I just love oh, it. My gosh, these loons, the loonies, get on you, and you know, with oh. all this propaganda, and you said, oh, no, 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 I no, should man. have been more considerate. I've been more considerate in the sense of... You know, what nonsense! <laughs> Blow them away! Uh, it's just for the, you know, Give not, them a little of their own I'm medicine not, I mean, back. I think that the, the skins of... of people who are pro-gun are so thin. Well, that that's I might, their problem might, now, isn't it? I might be able, I'll, ne I'll never be able to uh, convert them to, you know, you to our perspective. the Constitution and not necessarily be pro-gun, okay? And that's I mean, an NRA I, member talking. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm saying, you know, there are people that actually believe that if you start doing this, that and they may not care again, they may hate guns, but they think you're fooling right. around with the Constitution. Yeah, they get sure, very but sensitive. You know, we don't hear that. from them. We hear from all the, the loonies. loonies. You know, so, you know, I think... What's what a in all, I mean, are you... Larry are you, Dunn. Anyone who disagrees? <laughs> <Next? okay. laughs> Just kidding, Larry. Uh, a, a loony is anyone who... <laughs> Who, who asks ridiculous questions like, well, what are you going to do if your wife and, and oh, children are being okay. raped at gunpoint? Well, you know, I mean, these sort of questions that you ask someone, you know, who's a presidential candidate like, you know. Michael Dukakis. <laughs> right, and, and not. It, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's not even a real argument at that point. And that's who I hear from. And that's who I hear from. I hear from people who bring up the worst case scenarios, right. and they just, they just revel in it. They, they just keep, revel they in people. blood and death right. and destruction they to make their live, point. They live. I'll tell you, they're cowards. That's mm -hmm. what I think. They right. live in fear. They're they safeties. live in terror and there's a bully aspect to them because right. bullies are cowards. Right. And the brave people are the people who aren't packing right. heat. Right. And, but that's a hard argument to make without hurting people's feelings. Oh, I'm so and I'm the sorry. Bravest, I'm the bravest <laughs> wimp on the block, so damn it. <laughs> Back in a moment with Night Talk Free for all night. Anybody night talking is free for all night uh, there is an internet porn site it is based in florida it involves some college girls who sort of do normal things but occasionally well they also do normal things like take a shower anyway you get to see them if you want if you pay money to the internet site because there's cameras all over the house but it's created a controversy in this florida city uh, take a look at this report it looks like an ordinary house in an ordinary neighborhood in tampa but inside, seven young women, 40 cameras, and thousands of paying customers. 
tuning in via the internet to the daily lives of those who live here. Amber, how old are you? Sometimes it's a chat back and forth, or as the name implies, sometimes voyeurdorm.com is just that, voyeurism. This is our t uh, tanning bed camera. This is my night vision one. This is my closet camera. You're going to see me take a shower. You're going to see me take my, um, change my clothes. And that is where the controversy begins. The city of Tampa says this is simply a high-tech peep show. And while most neighbors have not complained, city officials say an adult business does not belong in a neighborhood zoned for residential use. They ordered the Internet site to move or close down. In a lawsuit that will be filed this morning in federal court, VoyeurDorm.com argues Tampa is violating its constitutional rights to free speech. If the precedent is set that Voyeur Dorm can be closed down through the imposition of this regulation, nobody's safe. No internet business is safe, no internet communication is safe, and I think that it bodes very poorly for the protection of First Amendment ideals on the internet. I think in this particular case, um, we can't get confused between the debate about commerce, we can't drape this in a First Amendment discussion. This is very clearly and simply a zoning issue. Blow JJ a kiss, can you blow me a kiss? Voyeur dorm members pay $35 a month to log on. The site gross is more than $300,000 a month. But the owners say no money changes hands here, and the only people who show up are virtual visitors. All that is in our code is it has to be offered to the public for money or some type of consideration, and that it's an adult use site. It clearly meets that criteria. It definitely walks and talks like a duck. It is a duck. Absolutely, we're not a duck. Ducks are in ponds. This is a picture of a duck in a pond. Totally different. And then there are some who wonder if this attempt to regulate the Internet is motivated by politicians who want to collect new taxes. I mean, it's almost like, you know, those little speed trap towns that make their money by, by giving tickets to passers-by. Well, you can look at the Internet as sort of a bunch of passers-by in the millions. Simon says, shake your booty for the camera. <laughs> this morning, VoyeurDorm.com remains in business. And while its home page isn't moving, its home on a quiet Tampa street is uncertain. For today, Kerry Sanders, NBC News, Tampa. All right, so are you with the uh, First Amendment people who say we have to preserve the right to communicate uh, even crap, or uh, do we got to shut down these college sluts before they ruin the whole damn state? It's a sex business, right? Is this a business that, uh, well, that's that, 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 that's that traffics in sex? You yes, see, it does. You see them nude. I, I don't know if you see them have it sex. Nude women, I mean, being asked to disrobe. My yeah. understanding is, is that uh, someone can get on. They have to. They have to sign on and do some time in the chat room every day. Right. They're paid five hundred dollars a week. Well, the I girls didn't know who that. live there. But I, well, I know yeah. about this. They're paid five hundred dollars a week. The girl who lives. They they mm -hmm. are paid for servicing people who who come to them via the internet servicing them by doing what they ask if they're asked to disrobe they do at disrobe. this particular place yes I, at that exact okay, place yeah. that is a sexual business and for that business to be in a residential area is i think ridiculous if a city wants uh, to have zoning laws but, sure. but what if you're just you got this some cool website in your house and you write really great articles so people pay money to do it and, and yet your uh, your house is not zoned for a business but your business is writing articles that people for some reason pay 35 bucks a month, not that that would ever happen to get. In other words, should you have to move out of your house as well because you're running a business, but perhaps the area is only zoned for a residential area. I mean, all the internet people are worried that it's going to cut down on all the internet business. Hmm, Do you have to not, move to a residential park? in order to run an internet business, or can mm -hmm. you do it from your house? An astonishing percentage of internet business is porn related. Oh, absolutely. Right. And, but not all. And, and to try to pretend that it isn't is absurd. No, no, and I, no I, but there are internet know. businesses that aren't porn, and, right. and so That's then true. they all have to move to the outskirts of town or something. You can't operate mm -hmm. any internet business out of your house if you outlaw the sex ones, I would think. So zoning is not the way to go. I don't think. No, I don't think. No. I, 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 I would hope to God that we could keep this this magnificent form of new communication unregulated. I, I would hope that we don't start taxing and we don't start getting governmental editors involved in deciding what is or what or what shouldn't be. We have managed to keep newspapers free. We're not. We we've not done it with television and radio. Free. It cost me fifty cents for that rag he works for. <laughs> but you, it's your choice. Right? Yeah, that's true. All right. Yeah. Uh, Although I can get it on the internet. Why do you call it a mag? You said a, you called it. A magnificent form. Oh, I think the internet is just. Uh, that, I, I, oh, it's completely the base at I this mean, point. But I, but I think I find myself. I mean, I think it's. A, it is I, filled. I, I find with myself agreeing with Bill garbage. more tonight no, than I, I thought I ever could. I, 
But you're right. You're right. Uh, I think that it's probably the the last frontier. Uh, and I think that if we start to, I, as a father, I certainly don't wouldn't want a house like that on my block. But as someone who does value, you know, the Constitution, you know, and the amendments, especially the First Amendment, I have to to um, to allow it. Uh, I can hold my nose. I can I can scream invective at it, but you know I will allow it. And when we come back on Night Talk Free for All Night, Tony Norman holds his nose and screams like a banshee. Stay with us back in a moment on the Pittsburgh Cable News Channel. Actual news is still trickling into Night Talk Free for All Night. Lynn Cullen, who uh, read the Wall Street Journal today, the rest of us did not, tells me that the uh, the Shakers, a religious group, is uh, trying to recruit. The Shakers are recruiting. They're uh, they at their uh, peak, I guess. Uh, are they like opposed by the movers. About eight. <laughs> I thought you remember the Shakers. 1850. There were I thought the Shakers was like a bad 50s band. I know they're famous for their the furniture. Oh, yeah. You heard of their furniture? Oh, sorry, Shaker yeah. chair. The marvelous, we all know what the Shakers are. Right? Oh, wow. uh, that's a religion. I thought yeah. the Quaker. Oh, yeah. I thought the Quakers did that. It is a way of no, life. They, no. they, they live in communities. Simplicity they is eschew, their whole home. You know, worldly things. Right. They make furniture, mm -hmm. and they are celibate. Yeah. And as a result, obviously, well, as generations have gone on, their numbers have tended to decrease. They used to get members by uh, getting children from orphanages. There aren't orphanages anymore, and 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 uh, they don't. I guess people who place children don't place them in. Shakers. Shakers. So right. there's like six or seven of them left. The Wall Street Journal had a front page article today about how one of them has ventured out into the world, which is like, you know, not what they have normally done because, no. I mean, they've decided so that do. they want to survive. So yeah. it's an alternative to being uh, a priest or a nun, I guess, or a monk. But it's men and women I mean, living it, together. you have to be celibate. Right. You have to be celibate. Right. 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 Yeah, Any of you guys you interested? I think you have to, I mean, and I you think have to know how to make furniture. <laughs> and you have you to have know, to I, I imagine you're, 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 yeah. um, and they're, they're, I, I don't know, they're, I bet that furniture's been pounded real hard with nails. I yeah, bet. yeah, yeah. I bet. Yeah, no wonder they're so good at it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, God. Well, I'm surprised you haven't bought up the um, Reagan biography by Will. Evan Moore. Oh, yes. Uh, all right, so this guy who wrote the Reagan biography, uh, his name escapes me, maybe you guys Evan know Evan Morris. Morris. All right. Um, used some sort of weird device where there's some guy who doesn't really exist, he's completely yeah, fictional. It's him. It's yeah. him yeah. Is he, it? inserts he inserts himself, himself throughout the narrative. Yeah. Edmund Mars was, uh, is Ronald Reagan's official biographer and he spent seven, eight years um, Hanging with around the president. With uh, extraordinary basically. access to him, which I mean the most biographers certainly term. don't, yeah, was, right. was, was there. And he, he, um, he finally turned in his book and um, yeah, the early years, galleys have gotten out to the media, like and so there's this firestorm, this literary firestorm, because Mr. Morris inserted himself into Reagan's biography as, as a character. I saw Don Regan, former chief of staff, complaining about it today on the news, and many other Reagan loyalists. Right, they, right, and I, he, he says that it's a very affectionate biography of the president, but he also says in his biography that the president um, really had a hard time distinguishing between reality and fantasy, and that he had no inner life, so and it was, was sort necessary. Of an too, right? Right. It yeah. was sort of necessary for him to do this in order to create, I don't know, to create tension or to, or to sort of explain certain things that happened in the president's life. Well, didn't he so. raise the question of just how engaged uh, the president was at oh, times? Oh, sure, but yeah. you didn't need that book to, to raise <laughs> well, that right. question. I no, but if, if this <laughs> but guy had the most access, it sort of legitimizes well, this guy some is, of what I his critics say. Well, this guy is, I think, a Pulitzer Prize-winning biographer of uh, Teddy, Teddy, Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt. Right. He's, he's Yeah, ab Whatever. And mm -hmm. he complained to a, con a convention of historians uh, by three or four years mm -hmm. back that he could not get his hands on Ronald right. Reagan. Right. He couldn't find a there there. Right. And he finally, I guess, uh, had this brilliant idea of getting out of this conundrum by creating yeah. this almost fictionalized account. So what do you think of this literary device? Hey, you know, I'm going to buy it. You know why I'm oh, going to buy yeah. it? Because no. it sounds fascinating. Yeah. And, and the fact is, is that the president, uh, President Reagan was a completely ethereal, and and I think this biography. That's, that's is a kind word. You are Mr. Uh, Conciliator tonight. It, it, it is it is uh, it is in keeping with with the spirit of this president, and I think that we may, in a, in a sort of indirect way, find out 
more about the president this way than we would have from a straight biography. I agree with Tony. I think this might have been the perfect right. advice. This guy might have done something. He's either done something outrageously egotistical and absurd, or he's mm -hmm. done something brilliant. Right. William, right. do you right. care about the literary right. device? Yeah, I do, because I, I was looking forward to this book. I've been looking forward to it for And now you're not years. looking forward to well, it. Now that, no, it's a big I, disappointment. I, I, Maureen Dowd dumped all over. Well, it was, a, it was a pretty yesterday. brilliant little uh, column she wrote. Yes, it was. Nasty little yeah, answer. It was, it was nasty. It was nasty. And I, and I, uh, so I'm, I'm mm -hmm. kind of disappointed knowing about it, but I'm like, Tony will buy the book and devour it. Uh, sure. But sure. I, I think this will help. Line. No, this book is going to be, uh, oh, yeah, I'm they're going to sell it big time. This is oh, a very yeah. popular present we're talking yeah. about. And for all of the, the alleged uh, lack of, of engagement and what's going on, I'd, I'd rather see what he did in the last eight years than what this guy's done in the last eight years. So I think we ought to have more Reagans and less Clintons. And, and if it takes a little Hollywood and a little fantasy, God bless us, we we got rid of communism, and we and we. Oh, and we, okay. and we All right. Yes, you did, and good. God bless you for it. All of us yeah, supported sort of President like Reagan. A lapse of a, oh, it's good for you, and I thank you, and my my well, son I thanks trust you. Too. I, I, trust I do appreciate. You. I trust you being sincere. Yes, I am. And you know what? Good. You ever Okay, right. cigars. Cigar sales big, big down, and they've decided that it might be the gift Monica Lewinsky gave the American uh, people. I know I no can't stand kidding. people smoking cigars around wow. me. No and kidding. ever since the cigar incident cigar sales yeah. have plummeted. You know, they were really on the rise. Yeah. Wow. Down. Wall Street Journal, too. you yeah. got to read it. It's a conservative publication. I'm surprised. I read it every day. I don't read that <laughs> Is it 51 now, Dick? Is it 51 as we speak, or is it 50? All right. got to get out of here. Thanks, you guys. You were incredible. That's it? Is that it? Yes, that was it. Sorry. Just like, uh, well, this is very just like cigars in uh, Clinton, uh, Night man. Talk is going down fast. <laughs> Back in a moment with commentary about uh, celebrities who want to be president. tonight's commentary. Hey, have you heard about all these celebrities who want to be president? Warren Beatty, Donald Trump, now Sybil Shepard? Did you hear that someone even suggested that animal rights activist, Baywatch babe, porno queen, and abused spouse Pamela Anderson, my breasts are smaller than they used to be, but they're still whoppers, and have you seen my husband's giant wee-wee Lee? They even suggested her? Why are we limiting the field to just actors and businessmen? How about expanding the field since the presidency is apparently something any old Jughead can do? In fact, how about Jughead, the cartoon guy for president? Or better yet, Fred Flintstone? Well, Ma, when's that ABM treaty done? You know, it's not like the presidency is a complicated job or requires any special expertise or anything. It's not like you have to know anything about East Timor or Kosovo or Outer Mongolia. If Clinton could have just stayed Outer Mongolia, he'd have been worth something. But how much credibility do these celeb pres wannabes have? Warren Beatty, semi-liberal who's done complicated period flicks like Reds and frivolous sex romps like Shampoo. Beatty would at least be able to negotiate a decent arms treaty because after Ishtar, he's clearly an expert on bombs. But if you've ever heard him speak, he's got that halting delivery and rambling presentation that would render him ineffective on the stump. Not to mention that he spent his whole life chasing chicks, and we're a little burnt out on chick chasers. The time has come to elect a president for the new millennium who lacks even a hint of sexuality, and that's why I'm back in Al Gore. <laughs> Sybil Shepard. Here is a classic, fairly bright, but not nearly as bright as she thinks she is, Hollywood do-gooder. Plus, if you're an actor and you're running from president, shouldn't you at least have to be a good actor? Well, not necessarily, no, although frankly I've forgotten. Now as to the Donald, we've already covered the anti-chick chaser movement, but putting that aside, I would say his primary uh, point of disqualification is that he's a greedy, shallow bastard. Of course, so is George W. Bush, but at least he ran a government and passed some laws and gleefully killed a couple of murderers on death row. Sounds like presidential material to me. And I really don't think Pamela Lee was serious. If you've seen the infamous video, you know she already has her hands full. Now, I was going to nominate George C. Scott because at least he looks presidential, but he had to go and die on me. Of course, being dead never stopped Bob Dole. But let's stop all this silliness and elect someone who's at least remotely qualified. Bill Bradley's my man. Lip Bush in the new millennium, I say. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, David Johnson, is, uh, how you doing, man? Man, that was, that was an award winner. Why, thank you. That was fair. What about you, John? What about you? Uh, I'm, I'm actually just, I just want to be Cyril Wex Flack once he's elected the county commissioner so I can get the occasional trips on the saucer up to Mars. Oh, and sure, and because he has no genitalia, perks. you won't have your hands full. Exactly. <laughs> I think on that note, we should say goodnight. David Johnson and his genitalia straight ahead with the 10 o'clock news. So long. <laughs>